So in today's video, I just want to discuss um, the images that I photographed in the last video. Mainly um, looking at the processing and I suppose critiquing the images. Um, so I, I took three photographs and I've got them open here in Lightroom and I just wanted to go through each one of those because um, my video last week or the week before I mentioned that I was looking at learning exposure blending and luminosity masking and all that and where I, whereas I have started that process um, none of it is applicable to these images and it kind of goes back to what I said in that video about the vast majority of my images don't need luminosity mask and expo exposure blending. I often find that the best conditions require the least editing but that's not to say I didn't do quite a lot of editing here so let's just take a look at them. These are the three images here we've got image one, image two and image three. Now I'm going to start off with image two because it's my least favorite of all of the images and it's difficult for me to really say why it's my least favorite because it's essentially a mirror image of this photograph here. They're all, they're just, it's the same tree, it's the same group of trees, the aspect ratio is the same, the camera settings were identical. Um, but it just goes to show that you know the, the subtleties in light and the subtle changes in the land and the composition and that all adds up and makes a difference. I think I get it, I, I just looked at the image back and forth looking at the two and for me, it's this image which is the one I prefer. It's the separation that you have between the main subject, which is this tree, the tree, the leader of the trees, if you like. The separation between the subject and the supporting elements within the frame, which are these other trees. And there is a clear separation. Whereas if you go to the other file, although I love the detail in these trees and you know that's a fantastic element, you don't get the separation between the trees because of here the trees continue on behind and that's almost a distracting element. So we'll get rid of that, which leaves us with these two images here. This image and this photograph here, which is my favorite, I think, although I have to say that I do like both images equally. But let's start with this photograph. Now, this, I'll show you the raw file. This is the raw file you can see here. So it's not too different from the edited file, but I have made some significant changes. And I'm gonna talk you through those. The first one being, um, let me show you. So let me bring up, this is the edited raw file. If I zoom into the image here, see this, this fence post and this barbed wire. Now, I didn't see this whilst on location. There was a fence next to me where I was taking the photograph, but I didn't realize that there was a fence in the trees. So when I zoomed into this high resolution, large file, what is it, 7289 by 466, 5466, this is a big file, so you can see every single detail. And that can be a blessing, it can also be a curse. And on this occasion, it's a curse because look, we can see the barbed wire fence and I didn't even know that was there when I was there uh, on location. Now you can't see it everywhere in the image. There are areas where it's visible, um, but there are also areas where it's not visible. And if we look at the edited TIFF file and I zoom in here, there is no barbed wire fence. I have removed it. And another thing that I've removed I found this twig here to be incredibly distracting. So let's uh, let's go in and edit this file very quickly. This is the raw file, and I'll just show you how I got from the raw file to the finish, finished file very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do here is apply a crop. Normally, I like to apply a four-five crop to a vertical image, but in this instance, it looks too boxy if that makes any sense at all. So I'm actually going to extend this to a 4-3 ratio, which is going to give me a taller, thinner image, but I think that suits the subject matter so much better. Those tall, gangly, lanky trees fit so well with a taller aspect ratio. Um, white balance, it looks pretty good, but I'm just going to warm it up a tiny, tiny bit. There we go, that's pretty good. 
Now the next thing I want to do is add contrast, um, but before using the contrast slider, I'm actually going to adjust my black and white levels. If I hold down Alt, um, that will give me my white point, but I don't often actually like to do this. I prefer to just look at it by eye. I don't think every image needs a white point and a black point. So I'm just going to adjust the blacks here and the whites before just to give it more contrast and uh, that looks pretty good and now what I'll do is I'll go up to the contrast slider and just add a bit more contrast and this is looking quite nice. Just want to check my exposure here it looks pretty good but just have a bit of a slide along and yeah I'll, I'll take it down a tiny tiny bit but it looks pretty good. There we go it's already looking far better and a lot more foreboding. Now I just want to add a touch of vibrance um, which really is going to lift out these reds at the bottom and it's also going to give me cooler blues so you get that contrast between the warm reds and the, the cold tones in the mist and yeah that looks, that's looking really nice now usually I would apply lens corrections um, but in this instance I don't think there's really any need to apply a chromatic aberration correction because looking at the file zoomed in at 100% I can't see any chromatic aberration for the software to correct so I think I'm just going to leave that and the same goes with lens distortion if I apply lens correction I actually prefer it without the correction applied I like those darker corners so I'd like to add a bit of sharpening to this image. We'll keep it at 40, but really it's not necessary to apply sharpening to the entire image because you can see here there's no detail in the mist. So if I hold down Alt on my Mac and slide the masking slider along, we can see that it's only going to apply sharpening to the white areas, so areas with detail. And then that way you're not adding any noise or anything to areas that quite frankly don't need any sharpening. Now it does, I wouldn't mind a bit more contrast, but if I drop the blacks, you can see here that it has a negative effect on the bracken at the bottom of the image. I really like the lighter golden color. So I'll undo that. If I select the graduated filter tool and actually select blacks, so no, that's whites. If I actually select blacks on the graduated filter tool, then I can change the blacks um, just within the area of the tool itself and not low, not to the entire image. I'll just drag this down the top part of the image and there we go, that looks much better. I've dropped the blacks, I'll probably lift the whites a little bit as well just to give it a bit more pop. There we go, just playing this by ear really. Um, and that way I've affected the image at the top but I've left the lovely golden browns at the bottom image, I've left those well alone. And there we go, that's pretty much the finished image. I'm now going to take it into Photoshop to get some of those distractions removed. So here's the image in Photoshop. Now I'm using the latest version, CC 2019, which has a fantastic content aware fill. So I'm just selecting this rather annoying distracting twig, content aware fill, bosh, job done. It's like some sort of voodoo, I don't know how it does it. I'm going to do the same on this twig here. Content aware fill, job done. Now, if you didn't know I'd just done this, you wouldn't look at the image and see that those twigs had been removed. It's fairly seamless, which is more than I can say for my attempt on the barbed wire fence. So let's go and try and get rid of this post here. Content aware fill, bosh, and yeah, it's done a terrible job. What is that? So now I'm going to be honest with you. I faffed on for the next five minutes, trying my very best just to get rid of this fence post and a little bit of the surrounding barbed wire. Now, when I originally edited the image before I made this video, I don't remember it being so difficult to get rid of that fence post. It was a proper nightmare and we just about got there in the end. The next thing I'm going to do to this image is if I just duplicate the layer and then on the top layer I'm going to apply a Gaussian or a Gaussian blur. I don't know how you pronounce it if I'm honest. Um, and I'm just doing the Orton effect. I use this effect on all of my woodland images. Now I'm just applying the blur. Um, not too much. Make sure you can still see roughly what the image is. Um, but my computer is painfully slow so when I try to apply the blur it just seems to take forever to render. Look, this isn't normal. This is an iMac. This shouldn't be happening. And the files aren't that big. So I honestly don't know why it's taking so long. But once Photoshop has applied the blur to the image, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. Then I'm going to go into my uh, adjustments and I'm going to adjust the levels at the top there. There we go. 
I'm just going to pull in the whites like so, and I'm going to do the same to the blacks on the other side, which is going to make the image super, 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 super contrasty and pretty much horrible, um, just like that. But the idea is that you're only going to apply about 10% of this to the original image, so that's the layer of the effect, and we'll get rid of it completely. And then we're just going to bring it back up and introduce it slowly. I think round about finishing off at about 15%, something like that. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, a bit of back and forth. That looks pretty good. Now if I just... It's very subtle, you know. It's very subtle, but it uh, does make all the difference, I feel, to those woodland images. Oh dear, I mean, I promise you, the first time I removed that fence post in Photoshop, it was not that difficult. Unfortunately, I can't remember exactly how I removed it, but it was probably a similar method. <laughs> it just went a lot smoother the first time. So that's that image, and you can see I've printed it. I'm very, very happy with the final image. Um, and I don't think I'll, I need to make any further changes to it. Um, now there's this image here, which is a completely different kettle of fish. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole editing process, but one thing I think is worth mentioning um, with this image is the split toning that I've applied to the photograph. Now, split toning applies a single tone to highlights and or shadows. And you can see this is a lovely warm golden brown image, and that's because I've used split toning. So about halfway down the Lightroom panel, you can see you've got split toning, and here you can see I've applied a little bit of a hue to the highlights of my image. Now if I actually bring the saturation down to zero so we can see what it looks like before, and yeah, you can see it's made quite a bit of difference. It's very subtle, but it depends how much you want to apply. Now, let me go up here to white balance. You may think if you wanted to warm the image, you could just use white balance, but you don't have much control over the tone, and it applies it to the entire image, whereas split toning will apply it to highlights or shadows, uh, depending on which one you want. Now, if I go to the hue slider here, and on my Mac hold down Alt, I can see the full range of tones that I can choose to apply to the highlights of my image, or the shadows, but in this case it's the highlights. So I want something quite warm, obviously I don't want purple or green or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to come down to the bottom end of the slider where the reds are, and I want something between red and yellow, so a nice warm orange tone that I can then apply to the highlights. It just Yes, something like that. Something around this is, is a good level, I would say. So I've set my saturation slider to zero. Now it's this slider that controls how much of that hue that you apply to your highlights. And in this instance, I'm going to take it nice and easy and just apply it like a tiny bit up to about 17. It's so easy to go too far with these things. And I think it's best to keep everything nice and subtle. So yeah, there you go. It's quite a simple effect. Definitely something that shouldn't be overused, I feel. You know, definitely use it with caution. And it doesn't work on every image, but in this case, I think it works quite well. Um, so that's everything. That's, that's me. I'm going for my second Christmas dinner of December and we're only on the 9th. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. So thank you so much for watching and tune in next time. Yeah, so until then, bye for now.